At the end of the 19th century, Robert Koch defined how we would recognise if a disease was infectious or not, whether it was a communicable disease or not. So obviously people get sick. The thing to know is, is this sickness caused by an infectious microorganism or is it caused by something else? And Robert Koch brilliantly generated what he called, what are now called Koch's postulates, Robert Koch's postulates. So how do we define if a disease is infectious? Well, first of all, the causative agent must be found in every lesion of the case. So if someone's sick, you should be able to detect that somewhere in their body. And this is why we do culture and sensitivity tests. So if someone has a wound infection, we'll take a swab of the wound edgy date, send that to the microbiologists, they'll culture it up and tell us what antibiotics it's sensitive to. Or if someone has a chest infection and they're coughing up infected sputum, again we can take a sample of that sputum, send it for culture and sensitivity, and if there's an etiological pathogenic microorganism in there, that will be detectable because Koch's postulates say that the specific causative agent must be found in every case of the disease. Now you might not find it straight away, but it will be there somewhere. Or the other one we do in hospital if someone is developing severe sepsis is we'll do blood cultures. So we'll take the blood and see if there's bacteria growing in the blood. And these days we can also do the same with viruses. It's harder with viruses to culture viruses, but we can. So the first postulate is, if this disease is genuinely caused by this infectious organism, if it is actually an infectious communicable disease, then first of all, we should be able to identify the bacteria in lesions of the case. The next thing is, having got this bacteria, it should be possible to grow it up in a culture. And microbiologists do this. They put the bacteria on agar plates and they'll then grow them up. They'll grow many millions or billions of the bacteria, so it becomes very easy to identify it. And then, if you take a healthy subject and give them the bacteria, or give them the virus, that healthy subject should then develop the disease. Now, thankfully, we don't do this every time in clinical practice, but this is, this is the science behind it. So you grow up the bacteria, you give the bacteria to a healthy subject, and that healthy subject will get the same disease as the first patient had, because it's communicable, it shows that. And then if you want to be pedantic, the fourth criteria is, is again that you should be able to recover the organism from the person that you've deliberately infected. So let's take an example. In the 1990s, a young Australian doctor called Barry Marshall said that stomach ulcers duodenal ulcers, peptic ulcers anyway, said peptic ulcers were caused by a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. And at the time this seemed to be a ludicrous idea, the idea that peptic ulcers was caused by a bacteria. So what Barry Marshall did was he got some Helicobacter, he cultured them, he got a nice big vial of these Helicobacter pylori, and then he took a healthy subject, he took himself and he drank a heavy draught of the Helicobacter pylori. And as a result of getting that, he got severe gastric inflammation and ulceration, demonstrating that it was the Helicobacter that caused the uh, gastric ulcers and duodenal ulcers and gastritis in his case. Then fortunately he was able to treat himself by eradicating the Helicobacter. That's why now if someone's complaining of peptic ulcers, we give them Helicobacter pylori eradication therapy to get rid of the bacteria and that cures the vast majority of patients. So really what Barry Marshall did was use Koch's postulates to prove that it was actually an infectious condition. So remember, you must be able to identify the bacteria in lesions of the case, grow the bacteria up, cause the disease in a new subject if you inject that back or give that, inoculate with that bacteria, and then from the new subject, you should be able to culture uh, the organism once again. Robert Koch's postulates to demonstrate that a disease is infectious and transmissible in nature.